Hey everyone, this is Jinan Weibo. Recently, I wrote an article about how to prepare for the SQL interviews for any data science related roles. Today, I actually have a real SQL question that I designed myself, and then I want to show you that how you should solve this problem from end to end. I'm using BigQuery here. This is a fully managed um, data warehouse available on GCP. Here, I already posted a question in the comment. So the question here is to find the top three students with the highest average required course GPA in each school. They in the output, we want um, four columns here, student ID, student names, school year, and average GPA. Just by looking at the question, there could be a lot of following up questions that you could be asking right now. So you want to understand that how do you want to deal with ties? Do you want exactly to, or you want to include the ties as well? Next steps, um, you would want to take a closer look at the sample data before you start writing your solution. So here I can see I have a GPA history table. The granularity of the table is that per student, per class, per school year. Then it also labeled whether that class is required for that specific student. And then we can take a look at the other table, the student table. So the student table is a dimension table here, um, has a unique identifier ID and then also a name. In the GPA history table, there's a student ID 3 but in the student table, it's not there. So if you notice that, you would want to ask, okay, for this kind of case that the students in history table, but not in dimensional table, how you should be dealing with that. So for this question, we want to find the top two students with the highest average required course um, GPA in each school year. So in this case, um, I will split them into three steps here. So first of all, we want to find um, the average required course GPA per student per school year. And then after we find that, the second step is to find the top two average GPA per student per school year. And then at the end, we'll need the student name column as well in the result. So I'll join with the student table to get that information. That's my thought process. I'll write my query based on that. First of all, I'll get the highest average required course GPA per student per school year. I can get the information from the GPA history table. I'll select from the GPA history table. Since I want the average of a column per other two column, this is a pretty strong hint that you want to use the group by function. So we want to group by student ID here and also the school year. Here, when we calculate our GPA, we only want to consider the required course. So here, I use the WHERE clause to filter all those optional course. So I can do is required um, equals to true. One thing that I have seen some people did wrong is that they are confused by when they should put a condition inside WHERE or when they should put the condition inside having. For this case, you want to do the filtering before group by is executed. So where is executed first, then it's group by, and then it's having. So for this case, you want to filter those out in the where clause instead of having. Now we just need to select the column. I'll take the average of the GPA column and rename it as average GPA. I'll put it in a commentable expression so we can refer to it later. For the next step, we want to rank GPA per school year and then get the top two students here. In this case, we want the top two students per school year. That is a strong hint that you need to use the ranking function here. Assume that my interviewer told me just gave me exactly two at the end. In this case, I'll choose the row number function to do my ranking. I can select from the time table. I want to create the row number here, partition by school year here, because we want to rank per school year. Then we want to order by the average GPA in a descending order. I'll give it a name, just to call it the row number. Next step, I'll join the temporary table with the student table using the student ID. Now I just need to select the student name. So the last thing we'll need to do is just to filtering out all the students who's not the top two. Here, I'll only pick the columns that is required in the output. As I mentioned before, the student ID 3 is missing from student table, so we'll have null in the student name column here. If we want to prevent that null and then have something more readable in the result, we can use the if null function. Let's assume that person is not on the student list because it's graduated. 
So I'll just say, okay, graduated student. So let's run the query and then see how it looks like. I forgot to put the filter for rank. So I'll just do rank smaller than two. Okay, looks good. That is the end of the video. So if you have any question about the SQL question I walked through today, um, please let me know. I'll see you next time.